Hello everybody, <clears throat> it's me again. I'm bringing you a Photoshop tutorial, how we can use our scanned images and put them into a journal. So I use Photoshop CC, um, Photoshop Elements, I'm sure is so close that I'm not going to do anything that Photoshop Elements can't do. So we're going to start. Right now I'm going to start a new document. And I will, as you know, I want the width to be 11 and I want the height to be 8.50 300 resolution pixels per inch with a white background and I'm going to create that and I like to pull my uh, I like to pull this this likes to dock there I don't like that I like to kind of pull it away just so I can see what's going on and when I bring images in I'll explain to you why I like this better. So for now we know we need the five and a half center and Photoshop has that so I'm dragging my guide out holding down how and I didn't tell you this in Scribus. You grab, you click, left click in the ruler bar and you drag out your guide. Now it also has guides at the top. So if, if you wanted to portion it off, you could do that. But we're not doing that today. So this is basic stuff in Photoshop. It's pretty simple. You can do it in any Photoshop that you have. So I am going to now open my folder for my scanned images. I'm going to view them extra large and I'm just going to grab the ones that I want or one of the ones I want and I'm going to bring it in. Now I do know that they are at 600 dpi. I scanned them in huge. So as you see, where did it go? It's behind. See, it docked behind. And why I like that is because when it comes in, it docks behind. But you can see it right here. And I like to drag from here into my document. Okay, so because this is so big, I have to use the control minus on my keyboard and I'm going to use the shift key and so I don't lose my What do you call it? Um, I'm not losing really, uh, like if I just grabbed it any old way, I mean, I could do all of this, right? And it all distorts. But as soon as I hit my, my shift key, I don't know why it's not working, but oh, there it is. Okay. So I've used the shift key and the check mark is up here 
in Photoshop CC. The check mark is in here somewhere in Adobe uh, Elements. So I'm going to say OK to that. And I'm going to come back to this. And I'm just going to bring it in a little. And this I'm going to pull past the guide. You can still see the guide, you see. I'll make this a little bigger. You can see this guide all down here. And you can see that I am now getting rid of that. And there's another way I'm getting rid of it. This back here, I don't need it now. I can just click out of it. But for us in Photoshop to get rid of this, Let's get the eraser tool. I'm just using this regular eraser tool. And we want a hard, a hard eraser. And I can't see. And I'm using the up or the bracket keys to go down and up. See that? Just bracket keys. Make it bigger and smaller. And I'm going to get it to a point where it's kind of good for me, and I'm just going to come up to the guide. Okay, click once, hold your shift, and drag down. It's gone. That jagged edge is gone. We've erased it. It does not, see, it does not exist. So I am going to pick. And look down here as well. I got to get a little smaller because our words are still at the bottom. I'm not going to use the eraser tool for this. All I'm going to do is go here to the crop tool. And you see how it's it's got the crops all around my whole document. I'm just going to click it once. I don't think you have this in Elements, so you will have to draw it or move your um, your squares to where you want them to be. I'm just going to say yes to that. So as you see, when I now pick this, this is what we have. It's no longer there. So that's basically the whole tutorial. That's how simple it really, really is. However, let's bring in one more. And I love this one. So I'm going to bring it in. Because they're so large, 600 DPI. I'm working on my laptop on Wi-Fi. So... It's a little bit slower, but this is my most comfortable working space. This is where I work in Photoshop. 100% of my dime is in on my little laptop, sitting in my recliner with my feet up, relaxed. I just feel at home, if you know what I mean. So my next picture that we've just brought in is behind. Again, see, I'm going to dock it again. That's where it automatically goes. That's why I pull this away. So that anything else I bring in can dock back there. And I can grab this and just bring it in. Uh... I don't know what that means. Oh, I see. See, I touch this. That changes this. Now I'm in this workspace. You must be on the image that you're, you're wanting to bring in. See? There it is. And I'm just going to bring it in. It is enormous. So, 
down we go. Control minus key or control plus key to make it bigger. But control minus and shift key first. Sorry. Yeah, shift key. What am I saying? Shift key first. I don't often talk these things out. Sorry, guys. And we're going to make this... Um, I want to make it the way I want to make it. So let's see how it goes. I need, as you can see already, I haven't said yes. See, I haven't clicked the yes yet. Um, I'm going to, first of all, I'll say yes. Let's just say yes there. I want to get rid of that back picture and it's gone. So now we're just left with my working space. Um, I know in Elements, when you bring in, you go File, Open, a new image, and that puts it in your little docker at the bottom. And that way you can just pick it and drop it in. So it's it's very similar what I'm doing. Um, I'm sure that you can figure this out. If I forgot to do one thing when we first started, but I'll talk about it in a minute. So you see the word Somerset down here? I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to drag it down. Yes, it's kind. Of, it is kind of, you know, taking away part of the picture, but not enough to, not enough to worry about it. So I'm going to click my cropping tool again, and I think in Elements you can draw around. I am not quite sure how that works, but you know, if you've used Elements, you can. Click crop, and I'm sure you can figure it out. It, it's pretty easy, but it's much easier in Photoshop CC. Now, I've clicked it once, and I'm going to say yes. So everything in the background is now gone. Now, in Photoshop, and I, I know I forget how you do this in Photoshop, uh, in, in Elements. Sometimes when you're printing, you may want, like these are very bright. And sometimes I like to add lines or if you do, I, I go to the first layer, which is layer one. And down here, I add a new layer. So there's a blank layer here. I'm going to change my colors to black and white and put white in the forefront. That's my forefront color. And I'm going to, I'm just going to fill this page, okay, with white. And you're going, oh, the picture's gone, but it's really not. It's under this white layer but I want to do something more with this white layer. Because we're on that layer, the handles are here and here. I want to bring this handle back and just have it to be the size of our picture. You see that? You can see that right in there. But now I'm going to change the opacity. I want the opacity to come down. Watch what happens. It starts letting it through. It sneaks through. See? So you can have them as bright or as light as you like. And sometimes I think with art journals, we don't want them all bright. Like, I quite like them mixed up a little bit. So that's one thing you can do, okay? I'm going to say, I just click that opacity word and it's done. But I'm going to take that off. We could do the same to this side.
but I want to show you another little trick you can do. I'm going to, you have to be on the layer you're going to work with. If I want to work on this side, I have to be on this layer. And I'm going to take, I want to know what that is, the rectangular marquee tool. Now, I know that Elements has this. I'm going to take this and draw a line. Do you see how, it, how it's around there? And I'm going to go Control C to copy that. Get a new layer. Control V, as in Victor, Control V to paste. And you don't see it because it's here. I'm going to bring it up. And I've hidden this white area, this white one. But anyways, it's up here. I'm going to grab a hold of it, hold my shift key, and drag it over. Just because I want to show you what you can do. I have loved this, this word, these words forever. <laughs> I've loved them. So at this point, I'm going to play with my blending modes. Okay. This, these are blending modes in here. And a lot of times I'll use multiply. See, multiply, what that does, it really, let me get, get in big here for you. It really takes the white away. It does kind of leave a bit of a, it's not clear. Um, but you can also bring that opacity down. And something else you can do. Uh, I want to do this before I do any of this. Sorry, guys. I just want to grab this color so that it's in the foreground. It's the foreground, the color picker. Okay. Now I can go into multiply. Bring that opacity down. To about there, I think. And I just click the word opacity. It's like saying yes. And right now I'm going to get my brush tool, just like we did when we erased. This, instead of erasing this time, I'm going to paint with a brush. So I'm going to use my bracket keys. My right bracket key will make this bigger. Now, I'm thinking this will work, but yeah, it does. See, because I've got the same color, that's why it works. And to me, I'm in love. That, to me, is love. I I fell upon this one day, and it just tickled me. I loved it. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you can, we're going to get rid of, all of these other words in this picture because I don't think you really want all that, do you? So let's get on the right layer. So that's over here. And I want to make sure I've got the right color. And we're going to try this. I want to see if that really shows or doesn't show. It does show. So Edit, undo brush tool, okay? Um, let me get smaller here. Let's see what we can do. This is tough. I think what I'll do is get the rectangle, rectangular Marquee, rectangular marquee tool again and I'm just going to try this and 
and I want to pour a new layer here. So just let me play with this for a minute. Uh, I'm going to make this a little wider, a little longer, and see, I don't really like that so much. Yeah, I don't like that. So I'm going to delete that layer. Um, I think this is the one where uh, we should really make it lighter. I want that much lighter, about 75% and click opacity, the word opacity to say yes. And this milled lavender, I just did that so you could see how to do that. Um, th this is kind of like how I work. So I think I'll go back to 100% opacity. We're going to save this. This is going to be, uh, I'll save as. Uh, this PC, we're going to my stick again, Photoshop class. Uh, I'm going to call this page one. And I don't need to save the Photoshop document. So I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And it'll be saved at 300 DPI because that's what we made this to be. on that's done so now what i'm going to do is take everything but the background and delete it so now we're back to where we began i want to save this file save as um never mind i hit the wrong thing file save as <laughs> i want to call this and we're going to make it a Photoshop document, PSD. This is our journal template. And that's saved. So now I can X out of it. File, open, journal template. And it brings back, it brings back the guide and everything. But always remember, when you are working with a template, you can always make a mistake and overwrite it. Not that this is hard to make. As you saw, it's pretty simple. But if you were working with a complex template, you would want to go image, duplicate. Your, it's going to be journal template copy now. Okay, right here. I'm going to, I got rid of the original. And that's one of the first things I ever learned when I was a digital scrapbook designer. To always make a copy to duplicate it. Um, what else do I want to say? Now, when you do all your images, let's just go in here and grab the one that we made. Page one. Let's grab it. I'm going to minimize this for right now. Um, so we've got that, and as JPEGs, these silly things always stay, but don't worry about it. They don't print. It's okay. 
Our guides are there. They don't print. Um, but I wanted to let you know that every one that you put, one here, one here, one here, one here, back and forth, page by page, page one, page two, page three, and so on and so forth. You're not doing a back page. So when you actually take this, let's pretend this is a piece of paper, and you flip this over, because this is in half, what's on the other side? So, you must remember to print, um, how can I explain this better? Uh, I'm going to, oh, that would be, okay, let's go back to our template, and we're just going to make one more page. And I might even go further than that. This was for my sister. Uh, I have some stuff in here. And because I'm working off a stick. Uh, where is it? Ruled paper. That's probably not what I want. And it isn't. So that's not it. Let me go back. Uh, Lori Journal, oh, yeah. Okay, see, I have saved, see how I've saved them? PP meaning paper one, or page one, you can call it whatever. Um, I, I thought I saved a back, or um, what do you call it? Uh, it might be in here. Just as an extra. Yes. Line paper for back. But you see, I like to have them more like this. This is lined paper. So I'm just going to drag that in here so you can see it. Do you see how it's lined? You probably can't, but it really is. I was showing you some of the lined papers that I did. This is what I used for the whole back. And if you've stuck with me this far, I'm going to post this as a free download for you. Although we might want to lighten it, I don't know. Like, I don't know how this is going to work as soon as I.